Good morning, everybody, uh, of uh, Pax Christi. Uh, very happy to join you for this moment of retreat you, you have uh, uh, just before uh, Christmas and before uh, sharing the peace of Christmas and the peace of Jesus Christ who comes. Uh, and I would like to thank Mary Denise for uh, in, her invitation to uh, offer just a little, little reflection, little proposal um, in, the, in the, the way of your retreat. I put the title of my reflection to think and to act non-violence as a care of life and a hope for our humanity. Very simply, I would like to, to, to say, uh, with the terrible experience of the pandemics, COVID-19, we became aware of the vulnerability of our bodies, as well as the fragility of our com common institution and our health public policies. We felt now how it was difficult to find a good tone, the good language in our official speeches and in our daily dialogues about this crisis. Everybody, however, was in need of encouragement, in need of trust. Sick persons, medical and care actors, relatives and friends of died persons. All we need, all we are in need to be supported, to be considered, to be thanked, to be loved. Speaking about a war against the virus, the virus, some political leaders use the voc voca vocabulary of war and conflict. Other preferred to go, to go on talking about the pri priority of the economic war. I'm not sure that these languages are the good ones. Yes, the emergency services of the hospitals have known situations of absolute urgency. That's true. But all people involved in this crisis discovered the importance of professionalism, consideration of the person, dignity, hope. Hope. Here is a very special dimension of the human existence and action. We need hope more than ever. Perhaps we forgot it a little before. For our technological culture, the technolo technocratical paradigm, uh, said the Pope Francis in Laudato Si, our technological culture has been a culture of process. What it was going to appear was already known. All must be anticipated. However, what is coming is what we have not anticipated. That is the crisis. We thought to have the knowledge and the power on all. But we discover now that we don't know how to share life with the other li living being. As to the virus, they look for getting home. Virus is low for a home, but we destroyed the bio biological systems, the biodiversity, with our model of development. So the virus comes in our bodies. Our model is a violent model which uses everything, but we are now victims of this violent development. And we are victims of our way to use, to use, to consider everything as an instrument. Nonviolence is a particular approach of otherness, otherness of nature, otherness of the other living being. Nonviolence is the experience of encounter. Which takes 
time. It is patience and dialogue. In this sense, nonviolence is a special manner to take care. We could say that the ethics of care is really nonviolent. We learn with the ethics of care that to take care is to share the way of care with the person we, 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 we take care. The person I take care of is the person who teach me to me how to take care. So it's true for medical and psychological care, but it's true also for the care of the social relationship of the fraternity. We must to take care of fraternity. Violence says our claim to have truth. Violence imposes itself and breaks the fragile research the other is getting, which is our own research, research, research of trust. Violence doesn't produce anything. It breaks all and all people. It's a way of death. To let violence and to choose non-violence is a conversion of mind and heart. Not only mind, not only intelligence, but heart. As we say with the, the orthodoxy, we have to understand with our heart and not only with our mind. A rebirth and a new consideration of life for it opens to understand aspirations and anxiousnesses of all with whom we share our human condition. I remember the text of the prophet is Isaiah, at the chapter 42. Here is my servant I support, my friend I elected and who gives me joy. I put my spirit in him he is going to bring law to the nations. Is that not shoot? Is that not raise his voice? We do not hear his voice in public. He brings law faithfully. He will not break the ban red. He will not extinguish the spark. He proclaim law in truth. The biblical tradition puts in light the life and the testimony of the witnesses of peace and justice considered as sent by God to the nations. In this line of prophets and good shepherd, Jesus comes and approaches suffering and hoping people. He takes care of the little spark inside each person. He takes care of the relationship and restores it when it is broken. So forgiveness is really the most symbolic nonviolent initiative to offer forgiveness to the other and to receive forgiveness because it's a reciprocity. Jesus offers the promise of God for everybody. Stand up. Stand up again. We are, you are forgiven. Stay in love. In the beginning of the chapter 7 of the Encyclica Fratelli Tutti, the Pope Francis said, in many parts of the world, there is a need for path of peace to heal open woods. There is also a need for peacemakers, men and women, prepared to work bothly and creatively, creatively to initiate processes of healing and renewed encounter. So, 125. Those we care for enemies have to spark, uh, excuse me, have, have to speak from the stark and clear truth. Only by basing themselves on the historical truth of events will they are able to make a broad and persevering effort to understand one another and to strive for a new synthesis 
for the good of all. Truth, in fact, is inseparable companion of justice and mercy. All three, truth, justice and mercy, are essential to building peace. Each, moreover, prevents the other from being attered. Truth should not lead to revenge, but rather to reconciliation and forgiveness. 227. Finally, to take care and to act a non-violent care is to consider memory and hope for humanity. Memory and hope. Our humanity needs care, but it needs more hope. When we choose non-violence, we choose the future for our human community. The name of this future is Brotherhood. The name of our future is Fraternity. Each initiative opening the possibility and the capacity to offer one another hope, trust and love participates to the new time, the new history, history of a mutual hospitality and reconciliation. Have a good time of retreat. Have a very, very good time of Christmas. Bye-bye.